Hi everyone, it's Dave with The Economics Files. Today's video involves coin flips. Suppose you flip two fair coins and you do not see the result. I tell you that at least one of the coins flipped landed heads. Given that I told you that, what is the probability that both coins landed heads? When you first read this question, you might think the answer is completely obvious and that the answer must be 50%, but the answer is not 50%. So in this video, we will examine what the true answer is and show this with two methods. One by examining all the possibilities and looking at the probabilities, and second by doing a simulation of coin flips to prove that result. We first see that if two coins are flipped, there are four possible results, all with equal likelihood of occurring. We have heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, and tails, tails. And when we examine the question at hand again, we are only considering three of those four results. Remember I said, I told you that at least one of the coins flipped landed heads. So we are not considering the tails tails result in this question. Now, of these three possible results, all three are equally likely to occur. But of those three results, only one of them is heads heads. Thus, the answer to our question is actually one third. So perhaps a strange and counterintuitive result with coin flips in which the answer is not one half, the answer is not one fourth, but the answer is one third. Now, I can also show this to you in an Excel spreadsheet with a coin flip simulation. On these left two columns, we have a random number generated, either zero or one, to show a coin flipping tails or heads. And I have 500 flips in this spreadsheet. Next, we have a column that says, is at least one of the coin flipped heads, either a no or a yes. And I've used conditional formatting in Excel to make the yes cells blue and easier to see. This column simply counts the total number of heads, either a zero, one, or a two. And this final column is where we do the conditional probability. Now in Excel, this would be a nested if statement. So if, if we're not counting the coin flip at all because there's no heads, it's simply blank and isn't counted. A one means we have at least one head and it's both heads as a result. And a zero means we have at least one head, but it's not two heads. And we've seen that the average of this conditional probability column is, in this case, 0.32, or very close to 0.33, which is one third. Now, the other method we could do to calculate the conditional probability rather than using a nested if statement is just doing the count if method in Excel, where I counted the number of times two heads occurred and then counted the total number of at least one head happening and took the ratio of two heads given at least one head and that ratio is 0.32. In other words, these two gray highlighted column uh, numbers should be the same value and we see they are. And in Excel, Anytime you have random numbers generated in a cell, you can just pick an empty cell and hit the delete key, and it gives new random variables to everything, which in this case is convenient because it allows us to run our simulation multiple times. Now we've ran the simulation again, and we get a probability of 0.32, run it again, 0.329, 0.309, 0.31, 0.32, and you'll see that every time we run the simulation, our answer is very close to what I showed earlier of the answer of 0.33, the probability of one third. So let's ask a question that seems identical, but is slightly different, but in a very important way. 
Now I'm telling you that you're going to flip two coins and let's label each coin or give each coin a name and we'll call it blue penny and red penny. And you flip the coins and now I tell you that the blue coin landed heads. Given that I told you that, what is the probability that both coins landed heads? Well, now with this slightly different game and labeling of the coins, you see now that the answer is 50%. Because I'm only looking at the, possi the, the possible outcomes in which the blue coin is heads, two of them we see, and of those two, there is one outcome in which there are two heads. This time, the answer is indeed that 50% that you may have expected. And once again, I have an Excel spreadsheet simulating this, labeling the coins this time, blue coin and red coin. And now, for my check, I'm only checking if the blue coin landed heads. I then do the same thing, count the number of heads, and with conditional probability, I'm only checking for two heads if I see a blue coin landed heads, and I get an answer close to 50% this time. Hitting the delete key, we can run the experiment multiple times, and our answer in the gray cell is always going to be hovering right around 50%. Now, this presents a very interesting result. You'd say, well, how did just changing the names of the coins, making one of them blue and red, why did that change the answer? Well, it's even more nuanced than that. If you do the original coin flip with identical pennies, and I simply let you see the coin that flipped heads, your probability of landing two heads still changes from one third to one half. So I'm gonna say that again. Just letting you see the coin that flipped heads changes the probability from one third to one half. Now, why is that the case? Well, simply seeing a coin is similar to labeling the coin. And you can simply say, well, now there's a coin that I'll label as the seen coin and the other coin that I'll label as the unseen coin. So you're gonna say, well, the two coins are flipped independently of each other. One coin does not know what the other one flipped. So now that I've seen one that's definitely heads, the other coin has a 50% chance of being heads independent of that first coin flip. If that is hard to understand, think about it this way. What if I told you that at least one of the coins flipped heads and I showed you a tails coin. Then clearly the probability of flipping two heads is zero. And maybe that's a little bit easier to understand how simply showing you a coin changes the probability. And I think the key lesson from this video is that even when we look at probabilities that we understand and know, such as drawing a card from a deck, rolling a die, flipping a coin. Conditional probabilities can be very counterintuitive. They can be difficult to understand even when we examine simple seeming events like a, a coin flip or rolling a die. So that's all for this video. If you like the content and want to support the channel, please consider liking and subscribing.